Welcome to Family Business World. I'm your host, Dr. Dale Caldwell, and I have a very dynamic uh, individual that I've gotten to know over the last few months really well, Robert Bennett, the CEO and founder of Reconnect Tech. Robert, welcome. Welcome to Family Business World. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it's my pleasure to be here this morning. Well, it's an honor. You're in Atlanta, as we've had a number of guests down in, in Atlanta, the Atlanta area. Um, and, and this is different because you're really focused on education and job training, and that's the key to successes of family businesses. Uh, so before I ask you about Reconnect Tech, I always like people to know our guests. So, so Robert, where were you born, where did you grow up, and, and how did you get to this point? Well, I was born in a little town called Waysboro, North Carolina, which is 60 miles east of Charlotte, where mm -hmm. The Color Purple was filmed. Ah, oh, okay. Um, I left there in the 50s, um, the late 50s, and we grew up in Baltimore. Okay. So I went to high school there and one year of college and went into the military. Mm. And I was in the Air Force during the Vietnam War period. And wow. when I came out, uh, got into uh, corporate America. And through that, I worked at Xerox and Small Business Administration. I've been in technology for a long period of time. And I had a great opportunity to work for two major corporations that um, started my career. First was to work for Xerox Corporation. Started out as a technician, ended up becoming a sales rep because I saw they made more money than text work <laughs> on copiers. Um, in that process, I picked up the skills to be able to translate that to um, other people. And I was I offered the opportunity to be at George Washington University to teach for a year a continuing education training program okay. uh, in the afternoons. And I did that for a year and I had a 97% placement. Wow. I was doing the corporate education training program that uh, honed my skills to be able to look after other people and help them get to the next level. And then leaving that, I ended up working for USA Today newspapers as the first engineer to help to put the first online color newspaper into effect in 1980. Wow. wow. Stayed there for about a year and a half and got offered the opportunity to work for a company called EDS, Electronics Data Systems. EDS, Corporation. right. right. 634. Ross Perot's company gave me um, the greatest opportunity in my life to travel, to experience technology, to deploy solutions. And in that, I end up working on two major projects. One's called the Cap Suntech, which is now the Express Mail system that's in place. Okay. I was a national program manager for rolling that out throughout the United States. Wow. Started out as a project engineer, ended up becoming a program deployment manager. And then I was recruited to go to Detroit after General Motors purchased us to be a project lead on the transitional team for telecommunications deployment throughout General Motors. Um, I grew very quickly in the company. I went from a project manager to regional district uh, manager. Mm -hmm. But the title was um, more of a VP level where I managed seven states and a budget of $180 million at the age of 29 years old. Wow, that's incredible. incredible. I gave them back $90 million. Mm -hmm. And um, they wanted me to stay in Detroit. After they stole my car, I left. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I came down south. I said, I can't take the brutal winners. <laughs> and the issue of dealing with an inner city situation and going to get ready to go to the airport to catch a flight out of town to go to Jacksonville, Florida, my car was sitting on cinder blocks and they oh took my, the tires off. Oh my goodness, wow. So that was just those trials and tribulations of going through that. I ended up making my uh, pilgrimage, pilgrimage to move here to Georgia. Mm -hmm. And that was in 1986. Okay. And I've been here ever since. Wow. Uh, I, was the national training manager for GE Computer Service, okay. uh, which uh, I've been in training for a long period of time. So in that, I've been in the dot-com industry, watching that take place in the 90s, building websites for Holiday Inn and BellSouth.net. Uh, I sold supercomputers for Sun Microsystems. Oh my goodness. Uh, so I've been, in, I've been in the industry a long period of time. So I've seen everything you can think of and seeing the paradigm shift of the industry. Yeah. From the, going to, to where it is now. Well, well and, and, and now given that, that resume, you know, people think you're 110 years old, but uh, you know, you're a young man still. So, uh, um, oh, yeah. so, so I see your passion. I don't know anybody that's more passionate about 
the technology jobs that are available out there. You are evangelical about it, kind of the way I'm evangelical about entrepreneurship and family businesses. Right. Right. So, um, so you founded Reconnect Tech. When did you found Reconnect Tech and what does Reconnect Tech do? Um, Reconnect Tech, let me just give you a little background on how it started. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been back in the telecom, on the telecom side since 2011. Someone gave me an opportunity it's a little fun. I got to share this with you. Uh -huh. um, the gentleman gave me a job and he said, my first interview was look at the door uh -huh. and tell me what you see. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm deeply into my, my faith. Uh -huh. And I looked at the door and there was a silhouette in the wood grain of Jesus Christ. Oh, interesting. interesting. And he was like, you're hired. <laughs> interesting. That's what I saw. Interesting. So, um, you know, with that being the case, uh, I got the job working for Bob, and we end up in just a short period of time. We just came to be the number one recycling expert or basically an asset management company for the telecom industry. Okay, and uh, we won deals with AT and T, Verizon, as well as Sprint. So in that, I was taught how to move forward but i wanted to bring other people on board and as we were doing decommissioning of different tech technologies i was able to get a program in place where we took individuals who were first-time offenders those who didn't have any technical skill train them how to take equipment off of the site mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i mean from cell towers 350 feet in the air they were able to cut that equipment down wow. safe no accidents never had an accident and take a young person from who has never experienced staying in a hotel, getting paid $50 a day for them. Uh -huh. Plus they were making on average four to $500 a day. Nice, nice. Um, so at the end of the week, matter of fact, one of our nephews, in less than two months, he made $12,000. Wow. wow. Okay. And he was on the 1099. So, you know, I had to teach him how to make sure he did pay his taxes. Right, right. Stuff. But <laughs> we had a grand total of about 20 gentlemen to do that. Mm. Um, the reason I started Reconnect Tech was that when I started looking at the industry and being in an executive role, mm -hmm. I was exposed to a lot of different trade shows. Mm -hmm. And in those trade shows were all these companies making a lot of money, mm -hmm. building the network, managing the network, designing the network. I call it the DEM process. Mm -hmm. They designed it, they installed it, and they maintained it. Right, right. Well, in that, there was a shortage of minorities in the field. Hmm. And I kept asking the question, why is it that there's not enough individuals from the, you know, the communities, the military, et cetera, females, males of different nationalities, and mm -hmm. by more of a diverse culture from a construction standpoint, being involved? And the answer came back was the doors were closed. Mm. And the doors were closed because extended, and there's a term used in this market today called systemic racism, but the fact is the, the only thing that was systemic was the fact that the message wasn't delivered. Mm. Nobody knew about the jobs. Right, right. So I, I said, I can think, I asked a couple of questions over a lot of executives within AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, Sprint, uh, US Cellular, all the companies. Why is that? Well, nobody has approached us to go ahead and communicate that. Mm. So I created Reconnect Tech as being that um, mouthpiece and evangelist to be able to get that information out to the industry. Interesting. <clears throat> Interesting. So in that, I went and, and realized through studies that um, with 5G being built, there was going to be a serious shortage. Mm. And the shortage was um, in the tune of 300 million jobs, excuse me, 3 million jobs in the tune of just construction jobs alone was 300,000 in 2015. That number has grown now to 750,000 shortage of jobs to build. Across the America country? Because Th this is across the country? Yes. Yeah. Wow. The reason is because a lot of people don't realize that 5G was supposed to be kicked out take five years, you know, over right. progression right. uh, of getting skills built out with the colleges and the tech schools. 
they were looking at some time frame around the maturity of build out here in this country around 2028. Okay. Okay. Well, COVID came along mm-hmm. and knocked that five year window out or that, that window that they had of cushion. Interesting. Okay. Out of it. So now everything is expedited. Interesting. The, so, uh, the, so Robert, before you go, but 5G, everybody's talking about 5G. You know, it's on the TV, it's on that. Most people have no idea what it is. They just think it's five. Say just for the audience who don't know, say a little bit about what is 5G. 5G, I, I share, this is the simplest way to tell the people. Mm-hmm. 5G is a replacement of everything that's been in the ground of our old technology. It's the fifth generation, right. but it's new generation. Everything has been being ripped out. Wow. So is it like uh, the you, transition from digital, from uh, from analog to digital? Analog to digital. And now, and now it, digital and to 5G. 5G, right. So okay. here's the difference. Mm-hmm. On analog, you were restricted to 100 megabits or basically a high, uh, the maximum speed that you can get was 100 megabits. Right. There's no limitation. You can go up to 800 gigabits mm-hmm. on 5G. Interesting. Wow. Um, the reason for that is everything is data centric. Mm-hmm. All of the systems that used to process calls and process data were basically antiquated data systems. Mm. The new systems now have artificial intelligence built into them as long as wow. machine learning, wow. big data uh, is being used to learn the behavior of people. It's like Alexis, for example, you have any of these different toys that you have to talk to you, right. they learn, right. your cell phones learn what you do. Right. <clears throat> All that technology is being used by computing power. Right. So now that you have cars, people don't realize this, that they're being, their behavior is changing. They first gave you a uh, fossil fuel vehicle, then put you in a hybrid. Right. So they got you used to riding down the road and all of a sudden your engine went off. The first time you got in one, you were like, the car broke, right? right. <laughs> no, that was the behavior change to get you to learn of what it sounds like with a car that does not have a a combustible engine. Right, okay. right, right. Now, the next cars you're going to have are straight electric. So right. Tesla came along and got that behavior change, being a disruptor, to right. do that. Right, right. Well, people say, how are these cars going to drive themselves? Well, you have to put sensors and data in. Mm-hmm. So the network is being built in 5G to provide that t- capability on your street corners, your traffic lights, your satellites in the city, in the air that are being deployed. Right like space link programs so, like that. So, so everything, everything, yeah. everything so, so, has changed. So Robert, we're at a, we're at a breaking point, we're about halfway point. We're going to break for a commercial and then we're going to come back. I want to pick up this, um, this, you know, kind of what's the, the impact of 5G. Okay. So um, we'll see you right after the commercial break. Okay. We'll do. So I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket and it's always in the the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them. But, you know, she's putting them in the same basket again. It's like, hello, that's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide and go seek. family business world. I'm your host, Dr. Dale Caldwell. I have Robert Bennett, the founder and CEO of Reconnect Tech. We were just talking, exploring the benefits of 5G, which is really incredible, even more than I ever, ever thought that 5G. And so, you know, many of our our viewers are family business owners. And, uh, um, you know, uh, how can 5G impact a family business? What 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 will it uh, what will it do for them? Well, from a, from a family business, let's take a, a family business, for example. Uh, one of the analogies I use is an uh, electrician, a commercial mm. company that does electrical work. Mm-hmm. That, that individual is able now, that family is able to take that business and apply the skills they have 
to help build the infrastructure. Right. So there's two things that have to take place in building 5G. You got to have power, and you got to have transport. So you got to put fiber in. The equipment that runs the fiber has to have itself uh, power. Mm. So in doing that, they can do solar, uh, installing solar systems mm. because of remote locations that require renewable energy because it's quicker to deploy. Or they will basically go in and, and install the equipment that's required to process uh, not only just data, but the calls themselves. Mm. So the industry is going to be able to help small business owners um, in all facets, from construction to um, electrical. Mm -hmm. They're all services that are needed, uh, service type companies that are needed. So you can create a business. Uh, you can create a labor force. You can you can create the tools that are necessary to get the job done. Uh, so the whole ecosystem for building the infrastructure is needed. It's just like building a city. All of those pieces are going to be needed. So those are different things that we can think about in the training, uh, or basically the employer side, being an entrepreneur, that they can go in and be a part of this. Wonderful. That's wonderful. So now we have a, a few pictures here. One is is you and a gentleman that we know. So you have a, you sent a picture of... Uh, of uh, of uh, you and uh, who's that gentleman uh, next to you? Ron Boyce. Ron Boyce, our friend Ron Boyce, who's all part of our Black Excellence Alliance that we'll talk about in a second. So now you were you've been running buddies for a long time. You guys work together. What's what's your relationship with Ron, who just mm -hmm. recently founded the Black e Education uh, Hall of Fame? Ron and I have been friends for uh, forty eight years. Wow. Um, it wow. was unique. We we sold books. Uh, Moonlighting in the evening at the time, like books. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, we sat beside each other. Uh, and the day I needed a ride home, uh, the young lady who was in the car with the one I took to my junior prom uh -huh, and uh -huh. my senior prom. Oh, that's on it. It was his girlfriend who <laughs> laughed. Right? Oh, that's on it. But we became very close friends. We're like brothers. Um, mm -hmm. His family's my family. Um, we've been together ever since. We um, do things together. Uh, we're just that tight. You know, we're, we're very close. Um, and anybody, I, I, he trusts me, I trust him, and that's the person I can call on when I need it. We, we, we all need a friend like that. Well, well you and Ron are part of, uh, we just had Jennifer Demetrius on the Family Business World, and you're part of this Black Excellence Alliance, which is really focused on not exclusion, but really inclusion of the black community mm -hmm. into the, the economy. And, and Reconnect Tech is one of the partner organizations, one of our family members, that's really focused on, on job training. And, and so, so one of the keys is making sure that, um, especially as we come out of this pandemic, that there are jobs for all. And, and, and you really have convinced me that 5G is gonna create so many jobs to really help the economy. You know, one of the realities is we think that the Dow Jones Industrial Average says what the economy is. No, the, the economy is the people working on the ground, the jobs creation, that's going to increase our economics in, in a way that people haven't seen. So talk a little bit about, about that. Yes, here's the shift. There's a huge paradigm shift that's gonna take place in the industry that a lot of people are not aware of. The jobs that you have today are not the jobs you're gonna to have tomorrow right. with 5G. Right. Uh, farming, for example, the machines have autonomous capability with John Deere. The de those units that you see out there, the carbines, those units can drive themselves. Mm -hmm. And they can tell and sample the whole soil and, and then fertilize the soil as well as unmanned drones that are going to be used to transport not only um, fertilizer, but they're also able to go ahead and do GIS mapping and things like that across the uh, to train. Um, your warehousing, 5G changes the whole dynamics of a smart, intelligent factory where you need that bandwidth to move that uh, data across. So those are the things that you look at. And when you see that, you, you, everything that we're looking at doing today is totally going to change everything. It's going to be. So what, we're going to look at some of the pictures. So Greenwood, we talked about Greenwood. And, and for those in the audience that don't know, uh, uh, during uh, segregation, legalized segregation, there was this community in Tulsa, Oklahoma called Greenwood, which was the wealthiest black community in the country called Black Wall Street. Um, and you had all sorts of entrepreneurs and all sorts of businesses, not the technology that we have, 
And so um, if uh, uh, we'll, we're going to look in a second at a picture of a Greenwood store. And, and this is the model. So as, uh, um, and, and there, you know, those are the workers of the past. And so you see the owners sitting up front and the folks nicely dressed in their white in the, in, in the back. And uh, I believe that's a, um, a, 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 a store with a, a bakery. Um, one of the keys about this is it's about jobs, Robert. And that's what I like, Reconnect Tech. You know, the, the jobs which were just retail back then are going to be IT. The next one is, and I want you to talk a little bit about the next picture where we have some illustrious gentlemen. You, uh, you had sent me this, this picture, really a legendary picture. Talk a little bit about the picture. Who are those gentlemen sitting on the step in Greenwood? The gentlemen on the step are the different, uh, I, I call them the architects of Greenwood. Mm. The different uh, individuals that uh, had a lot of input within the city of building it. But the gentleman that sits in the middle is one of the greatest scientists of all time, of all which time. is George Washington Carver. Yep. And with that being the case, it, it basically tells you that he came from the academia side mm -hmm. to come into a town to learn exactly what they were doing and then help them from an innovation standpoint, look at other things they needed to build out. So it's a collective body. We call it the collaborative partnership that is took and taking place. So that's what you have in that particular picture. And, and it's a group of, 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 of geniuses who, who've come from all over the country. Carver didn't live in Tulsa, but, uh, but he came because they were so successful. He came to that community. And yes. so you are, you are quite an entrepreneur, and, and your family, I know, is involved in your business. So you're a family business person. And so um, I want you to talk about housing. The final picture we have is of this, this unique housing, kind of housing, this mobile housing. And you introduced me to, and, and uh, it's, a, it's a technology of the future. What is this? This is a blue and yellow and green structure. Talk a little bit about this structure. Right. That is a 1,600 square foot uh, container home that has been turned into a two-story dwelling. Mm. And the containers themselves are the same ones that you see on shipping container uh, oh, really? shipping. Uh, container sh uh, ships that you know move goods across the water, etc. That has been converted into um, a modular home for quick construction. Number one, it doesn't deteriorate. Mm. Number two, it's green protected. Right. Number three, it's not expensive, mm -hmm. uh, and for quick deployment, you can build these units and, and put them together in less than. Uh, 30 days. Really? Wow. Uh, wow. So, um, especially with the new small home, um, the tiny home market, mm -hmm. these are being deployed around the country very quickly because you can stand up in them, you can have bathrooms in them, you know, they can range anything from $35,000 or up to 160000 and you can have uh, multiple when you, you think about it as a Lego. Mm -hmm. You can put all these different Legos together to create a structure that you can live in. So they're quickly to be deployed uh, in areas where you want uh, to find a home. And your first time homeowner can buy a home for $35,000 wow. this way. Wow. The, uh, so technology, and, and that's why I like reconnect tech. And so tech is, is, is innovation and technology that whether it's, it's 5G or whether it's new home construction or whether it's a new way to do retail, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's exciting. And so, you know, one of the reasons that, again, this Black Excellence Alliance, which is blackexcellence.org, uh, and the Entrepreneur Zones, ezones.org, you know, we're, we're really trying to use innovation and technology to transform America, to have America 2.0, to make right. sure that there are no poor communities here, that there are thriving communities everywhere, everywhere they are. So say a little more about uh, about that. You always, you always have some interesting philosophies about about this. Well, if you think about, you know, I have I don't have a picture of my logo right now, but it's an infinity um, circle, uh, mm -hmm. basically designed that says you educate, you employ, and then you create entrepreneurship because it comes back. Right. And and what we see is in this shift, there's a need to put everybody to work. And technology is forcing everybody to get new skills. And the corporations are looking to figure out how they're going to get these quick skills in a short period of time. Right. Reconnect Tech does that through partnerships with corporations. And my team of uh, partners 
that have the best degree training solutions in the industry already approved to be accepted. And what we do is we bring all of them to a uh, depository platform where everybody is able to go ahead and, and deal with training from K through 16. Mm-hmm. And if they want to go and get a college degree, they can go that path, or they want to go directly to work in a apprenticeship or an internship program, we have that vehicle to make that happen. So um, I see that changing the dynamics of giving everybody uh, an opportunity to grow mm-hmm. technically, skill-wise, and economically that empowers them to uh, take that back to their communities. And after a period of time, they want to become an entrepreneur. They don't have to stay working for somebody. Right. At least they can learn the skills they have to create their own business. Mm-hmm. You know, I was in, I did it myself. Mm-hmm. I, I worked in technology. I consulted for customers all the time for companies I work for. Right. And I realized, hold on a minute, people buy from people. They don't buy from companies. Right. right. So those are my relationships. So those are the things that we're going to teach through this process. Well, well, one of the things we're going to, so I'm, I'm a, um, as the audience knows, I'm a professor at Fairleigh Dickinson University. I run the Institute of Innovation and Entrepreneurship, and I'm really big on measurement. And so I created this thing called the, the, the uh, Jobs Needed Estimate. So you go into a community, and you figure out what the highest or the lowest unemployment is, and then you go into a place like Atlanta or Fort Valley or somewhere, and you look at well, how many jobs do we need to get the unemployment rate the same as our, our, our ideal unemployment. And it tells you exactly how many jobs you need. And so some, a group like Reconnect Tech and others can actually, um, can actually uh, create the training programs and job placement programs to bring unemployment in line so that we can reduce unemployment across the country and, and really have real, real specific, uh, specific jobs uh, focused on that. And that's what I love. I love what you're, you know, what you're doing. And, and you're looking to, now you're partnering with some other groups, you, uh, the Camden Dream Center and some others? Yes. Um, the model is set up this way. It, it's, it's unique because it takes in the historical black colleges mm-hmm. and because most of them sit in rural areas mm-hmm. uh, or based in communities that need to be um, enhanced financially. Right. And then the skill sets in those communities need to grow. The, uh, so well, those are the areas that we focus in. We're t- part of the National Association of Tower Erectors. We have communications and relationships with them because they already have the training. Wonderful. Wireless Infrastructure Association, which is uh, a government body that talks directly to Capitol Hill and the Senate and everyone in the FCC in reference to the needs of the industry. Wonderful. Um, tied into another organization out of Florida called the Learning Alliance Corporation that has approved vendor for all of the skill sets that are basically have shortages. Wow. And we have access to their content um, through wow. this to provide access. Wow. And then as well as um, the mail services who provides training on the DOD side for uh, through their unique uh, platform that they have for cybersecurity, um, data networking and things of that sort. Well, and you, then you we have, have the amazing... Camden Green Center that wow. is another partner who's been around for a while. Wow, I mean, your connections are, are amazing. And so that reconnect tech means a lot of things. A lot of multiple has, uh, you know, multiple meanings. So, so Robert, we're at the end of time. These, this half hour goes very, very quickly. I want to thank you so much. And uh, it's an honor to work with you, my friend. And uh, we're going we're gonna to change the world for the better. So uh, uh, this is Dale Caldwell, um, host of Family Business World. Thank you so much for walking, watching. Robert, thank you. Keep on keeping on, and uh, we will uh, we'll talk later. Take care, everybody. Thank you.